My name's Rob Turnbull. I am a bass player and co-lead singer. My name's Tom Pearson. I play drums. Hey, yo, what's up? My name's Mark Bodrog, AKA Bodge. My friends know me by that. The band knows me by Saucy Sweet. I uh, am uh, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, co-lead vocals, backup vocals. And we, we are, are unsigned. unsigned. What is the most memorable moment in your career that you can remember? One of the most, there's, there's a lot, <laughs> some we won't talk about, but this one I will, and Ant Girl, like we, I, we don't remember her name, she's from Columbus, we were at the Millville Music Festival. We had a highlight spot at the Double L, and everybody from the whole festival kept pouring down and pouring down, and the bar was so packed, there were people out into the sidewalk, across the street, and they kept letting people in the door, and the only place for them to stand was on the stage. At some point in time, you know, like, I'm just sitting behind, playing drums, looking around. I look to my right, and there's this girl that, like, stands up on Bodge's guitar amp while we're playing, and she's like, yeah, yeah, for, like, the entire set. And, like, I'm watching her, and she's just, like, almost, like, falling over on me, like, several times. I'm like, this shit's gonna go down. I don't know what's happening. Start screaming. Like nonsense, but screaming nonetheless. I turn around, the sound dude's holding her hand so she doesn't fall because my amp's only like 18 inches wide, and uh, and she just screamed the whole time. It was a blast. It was it was so cool, man. It was like one of the first times that we ever like had like that moment of like really cool, like really random, like not your friends kind of like feedback. It was like super positive, and like I think kind of since then, like we've all agreed that's like the most fun we've ever had playing a show and like we kind of like keep trying to recapture that kind of vibe whenever we play in front of people. It, it was crazy. There were so many people. The energy was so good. The first time I really wanted to play music live and for people was sitting in the basement of one of my friend's parents' house as he and his other friend played Nirvana songs and all this random stuff on their guitars, uh, playing Green Day and uh, all some early ass 90s music um, for a group of maybe five of us. And we're jumping around the room and having fun and shit. That was probably 13 or 14. Um, and it made me want to pick up a guitar and elicit the same response from my friends. So when I was, oh geez, probably in my mid 20s, you know, I, I, I said to myself when I was laying in bed one night, like, this is what I want to do. This is, then I wrote the reasons down why. And, you know, I said, I'm, I'm I'm not going to be the best guitarist out there. I'm not going to be the best vocalist or lyricist, but I love this. And I want to make a difference through music in this world. And I would like to be on a or, you know, more uh, grand scale, larger scale. Um, so that's, you know, it's what, what I'm working for. And I, I don't really have any doubts or, or, or second guess myself in regards to should I be doing this or you know, it's a struggle and, and I don't want to do this anymore because I got two other guys in the band that, that you know, reassure me that, that we're doing good, we're having fun. You know, I think I'm a shitty guitar player, but Tom will say, hey, Bodge, like, don't sell yourself short. And I'm like, all right, Tom, you know what I'm saying? I'm all, boom. So. <laughs> 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 I, you know what, actually I remember the exact moment of it, it's kind of weird. I think I was nine or ten years old, I was sitting in my bedroom and I was watching MTV. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm like 36 years old, so whenever I was nine or ten, that was like 1996. So I was watching MTV and a music video for a band called The Smashing Pumpkins came on. It was a music video, Tonight Tonight, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a, um, it's like a take on the Georges Méliès um, Trip to the Moon, I think it's called. But it's like this old like 1930s French silent film and he was like the originator of like special effects basically. And the song just had this killer drum beat in it. 
which is basically just like, you know, a typical kind of marching thing, but like 10 year old me saw that and just kind of like blew my brain wide open. It was so cool. And like from that moment on, like I just started drumming on everything. Like I would use my pillows in my bedroom before I even had a drum set to just like play on those, trying to like mimic what that dude was doing on TV. And I would just beg my parents like every day to give me a drum set. And it took them like probably two years before they finally relented and like letted me start playing drums, which God bless them. Anyone in your house that plays drums that doesn't know what they're doing is like the most annoying thing in the world. It's so loud, you're so bad for so long. Uh, but they let me do it and they let me stick with it. And it's kind of like been my life since then. Like since I was nine or 10 years old, it's like kind of been the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I'm super happy I still get to do it. So, we've all known each other for... I'm gonna start that over. <laughs> so, we've all known each other for a really, really long time. Um, my wife, my uh, girlfriend at the time that I met Tom, uh, my wife is Tom's older sister. So, I've known, known Tom for 20 some odd years. Uh, he was just a little kid kicking, kicking ass on drums as a, <laughs> I can't even think of how old, 12, 13 year old, um, with this beautiful export series in his basement. Um, and I'd always see him play and play with his friends, you know, their bands and played really well. Um, so we've always been hanging out. It's nice to have a little brother, being a little brother myself. Um, Bodge and I, we were in a band ages ago uh, called Be Nimble with a few of our friends. And uh, at that point in time, Bodge was our percussionist, slowly picked up the guitar and probably, what, 15, 15 so years later, after all of our music projects we were working on had dissolved, decided that we needed to come up with something I know I needed to do something with music. It had been too long since I had been out there playing and uh, really just kind of came together and I knew Tom was a kick-ass drummer and Bodge was a really good guitar player and just kind of had a concept and wanted to get together and see what we could make. Was that the right? Was that right? Is that somewhat relevant? <laughs> yeah, basically right, unless you want to talk about he who should not be named the the band, No, fuck him. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So really, when we first started playing uh, as a group, we were practicing and rehearsing in Homestead. And every time we had to show up, had to cross the high level bridge to get over to the practice spot. And you know, we were playing there, we wanted something that represented Pittsburgh, and the high level is what came out of that. We all rock, we're edgy, we're groovy, we're mellow, we're hard. But like for me personally, I say like Pittsburgh party rock, like something you can go to party, throw beer pong, throw cornhole, jam out, laugh, yell, sing with us, whatever. Pittsburgh party rock is how I would describe it in a local setting. <sighs> That's always such a hard question for bands. It's like any musician I've ever talked to, it's like their least favorite question is like, what genre do you play? Like, I don't know, man, we just play us. We play music, you know? And like, I, I kind of think we're, we're like that. Like we've never specifically sought or like set out to sound like anything else really. It's never been like anything we've ever thought about whenever we've been writing music. We all just kind of like play what sounds right to us. And you know, there's three people in our band that have three very strong opinions about what we want our music to sound like. And it's all very different. Like, you know, I grew up in like, listened to like punk and metal and like that kind of stuff and like, Rob grew up like in a similar scene, like, you know, punk rock, metal, grunge, that kind of stuff. And, you know, Bodge had a lot of his influences. I, I'm not going to speak for you, Bodge, but I know that you were in, you know, like, sublimey kind of like very vibey stuff. And Bodge actually has a very wide array of music that he listens to. And like, if you put that on paper, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Like, if you listen to our music, like, that's what it should sound like. But it kind of does, because like, we always have this beat, though, so that we want to make sure that whatever we're doing is something that all three of us are happy with. And that's what our music sounds like. It's the melding and compromise of like three very strong musical personalities kind of coming together in one room and presenting something that all three of us are very happy about. You know, if we had to put a label on it, uh, we've kind of settled on like group rock sometimes because that's kind of like the one 
thing that kind of is the underpinning of all of our music is that we really try to focus on like the groove of it all and try to like make sure we're making music that'll make people's asses shake a little bit. But outside of that, I mean, you know, we, we just play music. It's rock, it's loud. Sometimes it's good, <laughs> you know? Our inspiration to keep going is, you know, our commitment to each other. We're, we're brothers in this, you know, I don't have as good of friends as I have, you know, we can scream at each other, we can argue, we can fight, we can push each other's buttons. And at the end of the day, we all know that everyone's doing what's best for the music. And, and it's a love for one another, you know, so it's an all encompassing love. Get the art, get the music out, get the art out, play with one another. We, we know we have bonds that we shouldn't break, right? Because we know we have something special. We do have something special. I mean, I was like a shitty student in high school. Like I really didn't do much other than be in band class and like go there and then go to marching band practice all summer for hours a day and then go to school thinking about what band class is gonna be like at the end of the day, go to band class. And then whenever that was done, go to marching band practice after that. Whenever that was over, go to drum lessons after that. And then whenever that was over, go to, you know, my house and play drums or write music. Cause like I play other stuff too, but like, you know, do that and wait a couple of days, you know, one of my local bands in high school, play music with them. It's kind of been like the one actual constant in my life since I was like a very young child. Because we have a message, because we have art, because we're expressing ourselves, and we, you know, we, we're reaching a, a, a local Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania slash Maryland slash who knows, but like ultimately like we'd like to, to expand upon that and, and, and keep it going and that's Part of the motivation as well. You know, we all make a lot of sacrifices, and it's important to, you know, that we all respect each other, and everyone has such good musical ideas that, you know, we just want to keep going. And, you know, it doesn't matter to me, like, if I quote unquote make it. It's never really been a prerogative of mine. Obviously, it'd be, like, nice if I made a lot of money doing what I love to do, but, like, it really doesn't matter that much at the end of the day either. It's really just about doing what I love to do, you know. If what I love to do was, playing video games or shoveling snow, you know, I'd still be doing it every single day whether or not I was getting paid for it. I feel the same way about music, you know, it's never been a question. I will be doing this until the day I die. So back in high school, ninth grade, uh, I took course. And like two, three weeks in, I took it as a blow off course, first of all, like three weeks in, I was like, I was about to quit. And my course teacher, my choir teacher, Miss Lurchema, we'll call her Mrs. Lurchema. She called me out because she knew I was going to quit. And she said, Mark, you're a really good singer. I don't think you should quit. You should stick with this. And I gave it like a good like 15 second thought and I stuck with it the whole four years. And uh, from then on, I knew I wanted to sing. I got in a band with uh, Rob Turnbull, uh, who's a bass player and a couple other guys, and played percussion. And then from there, I was just inspired to play guitar. And here we are. How do you compare the music industry back then compared to now due to there being social media? Oh, uh, it's different. I don't know if it's better or worse, really. Um, it's never been easy to stand out in a sea of, you know, a lot of other musicians that are all kind of vying for that same space. You know, there's only so many hours in a day to do anything, whether that be consume music or watch movies or, you know, read the news or whatever else. You know, there's only so much bandwidth that any one person has to consume all that stuff. And everyone is vying for that, whether you're a musician or anything else, really, you're competing for the same mind space. You know, nowadays, you know, we have social media and stuff, which makes it a lot easier to get out there. You know, it's been a big tool for us to be able to get our message out there and get people, you know, invested in what we do. But, you know, at the same time, there's millions of other people doing the same thing. Well, I'm, I'm a huge TikToker and I love that I get to hear new music all the time. There's so much more projection. You have such a bigger megaphone to get your music out to new people. But if you're trying to make money on it, it's really, I mean, that's, that's not the soul of what we're trying to do. I mean, we all have a job. But to get your music out and be able to get your music heard by people all over the world, it's so much better. It's so much more saturated, right? You, you got the good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak, right? 
um, which is an old film, uh, which is Western. But it, it is saturated, and there are a lot of really great artists out there, and there are a lot of artists that are novice, that are trying to learn. So to me, it boils down to like it is saturated, and you really, it's like you almost have to be some whacked out goofball sometimes to really stand out in such a saturated uh, and, and kind of overwhelming market, right? Like, you have to be obscure and, and so bizarre that you have to stand out in that sometimes. And like, I, like I just kind of dress like a normal dude and we write, you know, pretty good songs that hopefully be great, but like, it's a saturated market. And like back in the day, to, to, to get our to get our information out there we have to do uh, you know grab a nail gun and print flyers out from from the local printer and you know smash them into phone poles and now you can like put it out to hundreds of people for like a, you know a fee on Facebook or whatever and it works but it is oversaturated yeah I mean there's an infinite amount of music and talent art artistry out there and there is always someone who's going to be better than you at guitar better than singing than you um but at the end of the day it's you know it's it's not a competition um i think we're thriving in what we're doing and other folks might be thriving in what they're doing um but we don't want to do what they're doing we want to do what we want to do to say that is to say that it wasn't always very competitive which it always kind of has been um you know, even back whenever I was in high school playing, you know, VMW shows and things like that, you know, it wasn't just like my band playing stuff. It was my band plus 10 other punk bands that were all vying for the same spot in the uh, lineup, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's it's easier now to become a bit of a known quantity if you have like a bit of marketing savvy to do that, but it's not necessarily any easier or harder. It's still kind of the same struggle, just the tool sets changed a little bit. How would you describe the reality of what it is like being in a band that is unsigned in today's music industry? Yeah, man. I mean, being in an unsigned band is uh, working a full-time job that you might not like that much so that you can support yourself enough to be able to play in your unsigned band on the weekend, which is what really gives you the energy to keep going on, at least for me. I can't speak for anybody else. Um, you know, it's, it's not very glamorous. I mean, a lot of the times being in an unsigned band, at least for us, is being in a small room together and yelling at each other until, you know, we get the idea that we want. And a lot of times it's really simple too. Like a lot of times we're like, that's a great idea. Do you like that? I like that. I like that. Cool. It's great. It, it, it's like working another job, right? We do all of our promotions, our social media, our songwriting. So it, it could be taxing mentally and emotionally. Um, but it, it, it's fulfilling, right? So. My day job is my day job. I try to love what I do, but there's a different type of love with what I do in the band, and it's like it can't be replaced with anything, nor do I want it to be replaced with anything. So what it's like to be an unsigned band, it, it's a struggle, right? But I always try to say like, let's just try to keep it fun, because it's like my escape, our escape, and then hopefully we get to present that escape to 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 people for them to kind of get out of their reality as well um but you know it's a multifaceted uh experience you know it can be a struggle it can be fun it, you know it can be uh, it can piss us off when people don't get back to us uh from a venue or or this or that but ultimately i, I would say being an unsigned band is uh it's fun and it's very seamless, you know, it's probably a 50-50 on that, but, you know, being in an unsigned band is calling venues endlessly to see if you can get into one of their open slots. It's coordinating bands who, you know, have their own self-interest to look out for to see if they want to be associated with you or that venue or that show, if it's big enough, if it's too big, if whatever else, you know, it's so much logistics that you don't necessarily think of because Whenever you're growing up, and like whenever I said earlier, like I wanted to be a musician my entire life. I never wanted to be a marketer. I never wanted to be a band manager. I never wanted to be any of that stuff. But that's part of it. Like that's 
part of being in a local band. It's not just being a musician, it's being a musician, it's being your own manager, it's being your own agent. It's all of that stuff on top of that. And it's a lot of hard work. It really is like having a second full-time job on top of your already full-time job that you have to pay all of your bills so that you can be in this band that's taking up all this time, which, you know, I wouldn't really have it any other way. How has music in your life helped you growing up? I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't be here. You know, we get the, you get the allegory sometimes. People ask, oh, would you rather be blind or deaf? Like, blind. If I couldn't hear music, I, I, I couldn't deal with the silence. I can hear music. Hell, we were sitting on the couch 25 minutes ago, and I'm hearing music. I don't know if everyone else is hearing it, but I'm hearing it. Um, it, it just doesn't stop. It's always part of me. It's always in the background there. I don't know, man. <laughs> like I said, it's, it, it's been so much of my identity my entire life that it's hard for me to think about it. Like, I've always been very artsy. Like, I, my dad was like a tradesman. He was a carpenter. He built houses for a living. And like, he always tried to get me to do that. He always like, you know, tried to like get me to like be involved in sports and stuff because that's what his upbringing was. And like, I think he realized pretty early on in the process that that's not who I was. Like, I didn't really like hitting stuff with hammers. Like, I tried playing baseball and I was terrible at it. But like, I always loved music. I always loved drawing. I always loved getting lost in like fantasy worlds and things like that. So, you know, if I wasn't playing music, I'd probably be like making really bad comic books, maybe. Because <laughs> that's what I did back then. Music never existed. I'd probably be AI. <laughs> I don't leave it out, man. I, mean, I come from a family of musicians. My grand, my pap, uh, Big Joe Bodrog was a trumpeter. My dad, Chief Joe, was a trumpeter. I'm not a trumpeter. My mouth sometimes probably comes off as a trumpet, but no, I, 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 I wouldn't probably be as the emotional. I wouldn't have the emotion and the mentality that I do without music being in my life. Or my forefathers and mother's life. Interesting, what made you go from comic books to being in a band? So it was a decision I had to make. Cause like, I think, you know, I said I was what, what, nine, I think, whenever I started playing drum, or sorry, wanting to play drums at least. I was probably like six whenever I started like getting really invested in like drawing comics and stuff like that. I think my first best friend I ever made was from drawing comics together in first grade. And um, Mike Fisher, shout out. That dude, he's a local promoter now. He runs his own promotion company called uh, Strike Shirt Promotions. Books bands all over the city. Me and him got our weird ass start on in first grade drawing comics about robots and aliens. And um, that was like my jam for the longest time. And um, it wasn't really until like I got into high school, I want to say that like, I realized that I had to kind of go one direction because like I really liked art and I really liked music, but I couldn't really spend the time to do both. So probably around like yeah, high school, I kind of like diverted there and had to kind of focus on one thing because it was just too much. What is the best advice that you would like to give to those who are in your shoes? Um, music isn't a competition. Um, I like to be as good as I can be, and as a group, I know we like to be as tight, play as perfectly as we can, to do exactly what we do as well as we can. Um, but at the end of the day, it's you know, it is about the camaraderie. We've made so many friends along the way, there's so many different people we've gotten to interact with, so many different people we've gotten to meet and experience just by playing music. So not being afraid to put yourself out there and really open up because it can be scary. It can be scary to put your thoughts and feelings on paper and then stand in front of a microphone and yell them at the world. Um, but it's also rewarding when someone does come to you and say, hey, I really like this. This is something cool that you're doing. What came to mind was I met with this guy that was in the music industry. Uh, we met with him back in the early 2000s and he, this guy was living in California, a suburb of Hollywood. He went to the Middle East and played for like sheets and stuff like that for exorbitant amount of money. And he told me, don't ever, don't ever play anything on stage that you didn't rehearse first. And, and I get you know, the professionalism behind that. You know, like you don't, you don't want to go up there looking like a jagoff 
messing up all the time or you think you sound great when you're improvising and it really doesn't sound that good. So he, yeah, that was great advice. Really rehearse everything before you get on stage and present it to a public audience. Like we've had so many shows, like whenever we were just starting out, where you could tell that we were all tense because you no, know, we weren't really like self-confident yet in what we were putting out there. We weren't confident necessarily in our abilities or how rehearsed we were, or if we were better than this band or whatever else. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The audience can tell if you are having a good time on stage. So that was kind of like the motto that we adopted a couple years back was, you know, before we go on the, or the stage, we tell ourselves to just have fun. And whenever we do that and we kind of occupy that mindset, you can tell from the get-go that we are a much better band because, you know, every band is going to hit a wrong chord every now and then. Every band's going to miss, you know, a drum fill. Every band's going to sing the wrong lyric. If you can just roll with that whenever you're on stage and you can allow yourself to be vulnerable in the sense that like you're not perfect like nobody is perfect on stage and you can just laugh at yourself in the moment and just turn the page immediately you will have such a better time on stage so just have fun it's music it's supposed to be fun don't take it so seriously Thank <laughs> you.